Welcome to another episode of Stocks to Watch for our exclusive one-on-one -on -one discussions with company leaders to help you make informed investment decisions. I'm Ashley Berry, and today we're welcoming Element 79 Gold Corp CEO and Director James Torek. The gold and silver mining company is committed to responsible mining practices and sustainable development with a core focus on developing the Lucero Project in Peru. They're trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange as ELEM and the OTC in in the U.S. as ELMGF and in Frankfurt as 7YS0. We're really excited to have you on, James. Welcome. Thank you very much, Ashley. I'm excited to be here. So Element 79 is named after gold's position in the periodic table, of course. So why do you think gold is so important and critical in today's economy? Fantastic question. Thank you. Uh, I mean, simply, number one, uh, it has been a historical store of wealth around the planet. Uh, still very used, uh, very much used for a lot of, um, you will say, cultural uh, needs, uh, especially in specific economies. It's massive in India, um, you know, for uh, all, all forms of, um, we'll say, cultural needs. But more specifically, the store of wealth, uh, economically speaking. And as we see uh, the paradigm for the last, let's call it, 70 years uh, since the post-World War era, um, that uh, de-dollarization process and getting back into um, let's just say a, a global position of uh, flux is bringing investors back into a safe haven. Um, we're seeing gold shoot up in terms of value. We're seeing around the planet uh, spot prices for physical delivery of gold. Uh, just the, the prices are skyrocketing. You know, I mean, spot is hovering in that 23, 2400 uh, per ounce range. We're seeing in Shanghai, it's upwards of $3,000 today, uh, which is, again, it, it just speaks to the need for. Um, investors to find something to uh, place their money into that they can believe in, that they can trust, and they know is going to be there because there's going to be so much other flux going on, whether it's a war, uh, whether it's continued geopolitical instability, or um, in some economies, uh, more draconian uh, <laughs> systems coming into place uh, more than uh, we've seen over the last 70 years. So investors are flocking towards that. And uh, for us, that's a great thing because we're bringing physical gold back online in terms of production and adding to the global supply of what can be purchased. Yeah, and really, James, timing is everything. 2024, as you said, you know, 23, 2400 per ounce gold. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Lucero project in Peru. It really was a gold and silver mine until it that's ceased right. operations. Yeah, back in back in 2005, likely due to unfavorable economics at the time. But now we're talking about the economics uh, of this project having changed, gold price trading around 23, 2400. Uh, let's talk about the significance of that right now. Sure. Um <laughs> if uh, I, if I could, please, the quickest statement to say, um, if the best place to find a gold mine is actually where there used to be one. A lot of gold mines uh, do become abandoned for whether it is uh, economic concerns, meaning at the time the global price of gold dips and uh, it therefore costs more to produce in one additional ounce, then uh, therefore, you know, you shutter your mine. It doesn't make sense to keep producing. Um, now, the things have changed. Uh, the economics are absolutely in favor of uh, basically coming back into commercial production. Something that I have to stress here is that, yes, uh, number one, this was at its time during commercial production from 1989 to 2005, the Lucero mine was Peru's highest grade gold and silver mine in production. Hmm. Okay, so uh, fantastic op opportunity to, to turn that back into production. Uh, to give you an idea, it was used to produce at about 150 tons per day average. And it yielded in its last five years prior to being shut down between 40 and 50,000 ounces. Hmm. We can all run the math at 2,000 gold, you know, if gold is worth $2,000 an ounce, what the production value of that could be worth. Um, so it's very exciting. Um, something else that I also want to stress is that since that time, the local community of artisanal miners has continued to produce from this mine. Okay. The historical data set that we got when we acquired this mine reflected that there were only something like two and a half to three kilometers of total underground workings. Our mapping program that we completed, just uh, building up to Christmas when the rainy season started, uh, so building up to the end of December, yielded that there's something like nine, we've only mapped about 80% of what's underground, and there's at least nine, if not more kilometers underground, meaning that mm. the artisanal miners have continued to work this for the last 19 years. Um, it had been in production for 16 years prior to that, 
And they're still eager to get back to working just this main vein set right now. Okay, so in terms of no, this mine is not barren. No, mm -hmm. there is plenty of opportunity exactly where we work. But talking about the bigger picture, there are 74 veins at surface. All past production only came from seven of those veins, meaning that we're not even at 10% of where this property can go. That's another reason why I'm really excited. We've got high grade, we've got plenty of running room, and we've got a proof case of people having worked it for the last 19 years. So we're just going to start amping up what they're doing on a weekly basis in terms of production. Yeah, really, some great points, James. I like the fact that you say, you know, if you really want to find the gold, don't go to a go to a current mine. And the fact that this this mine is not barren and it's actually been there's been activity for the last 19 years. So, and then when you explain the veins and and how you've only really scratched the surface, I mean, that's fascinating. What's what could be to come? You also recently reached an agreement with Condor Resources to revise the payment terms. So let's talk about the new terms and how they're more favorable. Sure. Well, uh, typically, just speaking, you know, the, the grandest of schemes when uh, someone options a mine. So Lucero, um, when it was abandoned back in 2005, Condor came back in and basically picked it up. OK, so uh, annually what happens in Peru is that uh, basically by July 30th or June 30th, I'm sorry, if the um, the existing owner pays the fees to retain the project, they retain the mineral rights for one more year. If they don't, anyone can walk into that auction and basically through a sealed envelope bid, pick it up. And that's what Condor Resources did, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Condor Resources' business model is more focused on uh, being a project incubator. So they buy low, add some value here, and then sell here, right? That's their standard business model. They're not interested in putting a mine into production. They don't have the teammates. Uh, they know how to drill. They know how to explore and prove up resources, but they, their focus is not operating a mine. Now, with that, uh, when effectively through the acquisition of another company called Kalapui Resources, we ended up taking over the option payment terms, okay? And we're very grateful for the fact that Condor is, uh, again, seeing where we're going. They have the foresight to understand that we have the team that does build mines and does want to turn this mine back into production. So instead of having to raise money from investor one and us just hand that over to Condor as part of the progress payments, that are required. So there's a 2023 payment that was due. We've reshaped that into partial A stock of our company as twice now, as well as uh, we owe them through the sale of another one of our corporate assets that's closing somewhere in the uh, between the middle to end of May, that we will complete the 2023 payment. They're flexible. They understand, they believe where we're going, and we are the ones that are actually driving this project forward. So we're, again, we're grateful that our teammates, i.e. progress payment uh, you know, recipients like Condor are willing to take our shares because they see the growth potential in us as well. That's a fantastic opportunity for us because it means less cash that you know, we raise to go right to their hands versus goes into the ground at the project. It sounds like a very smart strategy. We've been talking about Lucero Project in Peru, but you also manage portfolio properties along the Battle Mountain trend in Nevada. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on your exploration program for those properties. Well, in the past of this company, we had uh, gone through the process of uh, bulking up, similar to what Condor Resources does as their business model, uh, to uh, acquire, number one, a portfolio that we acquired at a very good price, and we then stratified them saying, what are the best ones to keep? Where can we make some deals and sell off to and gain some, uh, I guess we'll say non-dilutive capital for the company. And then lastly, um, you know, what are we going to continue developing? Okay, so uh, actually we have sold some of these projects already. We have another major one, um, our former crown jewel inside the company called Maverick Springs. Uh, we are selling that asset off. Uh, that one is actually more Carlin adjacent than Battle Mountain Trend but it had a huge amount of drilling on it, a historical resource that we improved to a modern 43101. And as we went around looking for drilling capital for it, um, we ended up finding a, a group that wanted to buy it from us. And that transaction is closing at the end of next month, uh, between the mid and of, end of next month. The other two projects that we're gonna end up keeping are uh, Clover and West Whistler. And those projects, are, uh, we'll just say, in elephant country. So Battle Mountain is where uh, the vast majority of U.S. gold and silver production comes from. And uh, while surrounded by fantastic neighbors, they have some development, but not a heck of a lot done to them. So our goal is to basically go in, 
rebuild the data set, whether through geochemistry, sampling, and setting drill targets for future years so that we can drill those out. Um, in addition to making sure that those uh, projects themselves have uh, 43101 compliant uh, reports on them so that as the gold trend continues, if there's an opportunity for someone to tap us on the shoulder and say, I'd like to buy that, that they're ready for sale. Uh, so ultimately, again, it's that, uh, that age old story of you buy it here, add some value here, and then you can sell it off in the, in the future for a greater value. I like how you sprinkle the value. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this sounds like there's a lot of exciting developments on the horizon for you in the very near future. So really, why is now the time for someone to consider investing in Element 79? There's two reasons um, in my mind that stick out the most. Number one is that we've rebuilt this ship. So from our IPO, which was back in 2021, uh, we went on one really big trajectory through all these acquisitions that I was just describing. And in doing so, we ended up um, diluting the company quite heavily for that. Um, now, it wasn't necessarily a bad move, but it was absolutely the first phase of where we were developing the company. What we've done since then, back in November, we did a consolidation. So we went from 130 million shares down to 13 million shares. Then we started cleaning up the balance sheet by taking some uh, of the debt that was standing there, 5.75, 5.76 million <laughs> of uh, the total debt that was on the balance sheet and converted that into shares. That converted, um, not only, you know, that conversion, I should say, not only cleaned up the balance sheet, but it also brought in a lot of those debt holders into long-term, very solid hand holders of our stock that want to see uh, the company grow into, and I'll tell you the, the verbiage that I hear directly from them, into a multi-dollar stock knowing that Lucero is that driving force and with a tighter share structure, with very tight holders of it, we have the strategic investors that we need to make sure that we have that support on the stock side. Um, so there's only a small float out there in the, the wind and great news reel coming. Um, that's the first and biggest and then ultimately go back, going back to macro. The trend is currently our friend when it comes uh, to gold and silver prices. Uh, the global demand for these resources is uh, absolutely growing and uh, arguably, Regardless of how much you want to prove up a resource, I've got a resource I can bring to market in very short term, and that's what we're doing this year. So I'm actually adding to that supply flow of physical product coming to the market, which does help. It sounds like you have a lot of stability, and I love the fact that you said trend is our friend. CEO and Director James Torek of Element 79 Gold Corp., thank you so much for sharing your insights here with us on Stocks to Watch. I'm really excited to have a future discussion with you and see where all this goes. Thanks again, James. Likewise, Ashley. Thank you so much.